Hello guys, a while back some of you saw my procedural terrain generation work and you asked whether I'd make a tutorial or just share the code. Today I'm going to do both. I followed the Brackis and the Sebastian Lake tutorials to begin with but I've condensed it down as simply as possible just for everybody to understand. I'm in the latest LTS version of Unity, which is 2020.3.17 at the moment. Uh, that was just to make sure that everything works the same. But before I get into it, I just wanna share some foundational knowledge on procedural generation first. You can just copy the code if you want and tell everyone that you made it. But if you wanna expand that big brain of yours, I suggest watching the entire video. We wanna start with the mesh. This acts like our grid where we want to place the procedural terrain. For simplicity, if my mesh was the size x equals 5 and y equals 5, on a grid it would look like we've placed 5 points along the x-axis exactly 5 times along the y-axis, so there would be 25 coordinates in total. These coordinates are known as vertices and instead of being x and y, we use z and x because we're in a 3D plane. Now, because 3D objects are rendered with lots of little triangles, we'll later write a function to return the coordinates of each triangle that we want to create. This is so that our mesh renderer knows where to put them. So one square is going to contain two triangles, and this is how those coordinates would look. The next thing to know is that we use randomly generated purling noise that looks like this to determine our height map, meaning the dark spots might be mountains and the lighter parts will be the floor. But if we always use the same purling noise image, then we're always going to get the same map. Unity has a core module MathF, which contains a purling noise method we can use, and we'll also be generating a seed, which acts a little bit like the ID of that generated content. With that in mind, if we want to see a random terrain every time we run our project, it needs to be using a random seed number. Otherwise, we're going to use the same number, which will give us the same purling noise, thus the same map. I don't plan on going through every single line with you since personally I know I just end up parroting the teacher and not really getting what I'm doing. So the link to the code is in the description and I'm just going to explain how it all works and give you a brief description of what each method is doing. Alright so to begin with the game object in our scene will have a mesh filter and mesh renderer. I've also got the collider and the script. To quickly show you what our end product will look like I'll just hit play. So the shape of this is being defined by a few factors. There's the number of octaves being used, the persistence and lacunarity of our vertices, but I'll go through those later on. I'll just also quickly mention that for water, I'm just using another mesh renderer, which is a cube. And then you can see like a little reservoir. Um, you can imagine those, that'd be the C on both sides and you can adjust the height of that. So in our script, it starts by instantiating a new mesh, uh, assigning that to the mesh filter dot mesh. And then because I like to put everything into functions, we're doing a create new map, which you can just see here. And in that is three steps. So we create the mesh shape, which is creating the grid, like I showed you earlier, creating the triangles, which we'll place into the grid. And then finally updating the mesh component to display our output. Don't be too overwhelmed by this first step. All we're doing is creating a seed, creating a vertices array of the size of how many we'll need, and then we're looping over each coordinate and setting each vertex a noise height through this method here. So in our generate noise height, we're using the octave offsets that we got from our seed. We have a few other variables here like amplitude, frequency, persistence, and then we're looping over each octave and manipulating that height each time. So the second step was to create the triangles. After the mesh shape has been determined, we want to create a physical plane, which will be our terrain. So all we need to do is create the triangles that will fill in those vertices. Initially, we're creating an int and then determining its size. Remember to times this by six because we're fitting two triangles into one square and both of those triangles will need three points specifying. And finally, in our update mesh component, we want to clear the mesh, set the vertices and triangles to the ones we've just created recalculate the normals and tangents, and then set our shared mesh to the mesh we've just created. And just to remind you, I haven't included the fall off map, uh, flat shading, coloring, um, object placement, etc. just because I wanted to give an introduction to procedural generation. However, if you did find this interesting and you do want to know more, then let me know in the comments and then I can expand on the solution and share the code in another video where I do a similar format. Otherwise, thank you for watching and please like and subscribe.